Welcome to our channel. Good to always have you around. My name is Mfano Bongudasen, your regular host. Last week we discussed Return to Your First Love Part 2. I hope you were blessed. Now, in that Part 2, we discover that when you start delighting in something else more than God, that shows that you are actually very, very far away from God. And you know, we have been warned. In Exodus 20, verse 3, you shall have no other God before me. That's what God told Moses to tell Israelites. So it is for us to put God first in everything we do. And there were some steps that will show that you have left your first love. And there are some things that you will do. Some steps you can take too to return back to your first love and one of those few steps is to have solid intimate relationship with god desire that relationship and one of the steps to returning to your first love is by praying and fasting and studying and meditating on the word of god and another step is render quality service to god and humanity Another point that is very silent, and I want you to consider it, is it's dangerous not to have God on your side. At all times, desire that relationship with Him. Let Him stay in you, be in you, live in you, and have a place in you. Hello. Welcome to our channel. I will encourage you to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so that anytime we upload new episode you'll be notified thank you god bless you so today we are to discuss faith comment by hearing faith comment by hearing let's pray father thank you for the gift of faith and the key here for hearing father please increase my faith Open my ears to hear you. Open my eyes of understanding. To understand this in the name of Jesus. Thank you because I know all is done. For this I ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So, our memory verse is taken from Romans 10 verse 17. Romans 10 verse 17. And it says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And equally it is safe to say, Faith coming by hearing, even when you hear the word of Satan. So when you give your ear time to satanic things, to worldly things, to earthly things, you tend to be drawn to those stuff. But when you give your ear time to the word of God, then you tend to be drawn into that realm of God, even when your faith will be increased by hearing the word of God. Our Bible text is taken from Matthew 17, verse 27. And it says, but so that we may not cause offense, go to the lake and throw out your line. Take the first fish you catch, open his mouth, and you will find a four drachma coin. 
take it and give it to them for my tax and yours. This is what Jesus did. So the people believed him and they did as his are exactly as he told them. Now, what are the things that we need to learn from that are Bible text? Faith in God makes impossible possible. He silences the enemy plans and devices. Faith in God delivers one from shame. He secures your provision during scarcity. That is what faith in God could do. When you trust in God, you hope on Him, you believe on Him. He will always prove Himself a God in your life. Let's look at lesson introduction. When we talk about faith, we talk about believing God and shunning all other manner of impossibilities, distraction that can hinder the fulfillment of our believing gods. There are many ways faith can be enhanced, such as true testimonies, ceaseless prayers, being surrounded by people who has passion for God and His work. These are ways you can actually increase your faith in Him. And then you study the Word of God. Believe Bible teachings. Put them to practice. Those are ways to increase your faith in God. Our first lesson outline is be word processed. Be word processed. If that word could be used to create heaven and earth, it is that same word that could transform your life. It is that same word that increases your faith, that can get things done for you. So to be word possessed means to be word driven, activating declaration of biblical promises, even in the scripture. Now look at Joshua 1 verse 8. God told Joshua, this same book, the word, everything in it, meditate on it day and night. So you have to meditate on it for you to have fruits, for you to have proofs, for you to have evidences in God. So, you have to be careful to do as the word has commanded, not enough for you to meditate on them. You have to be careful to do as commanded so that your ways could be prosperous and you'll be successful. Why do you need the word to be possessed? Why do you need the word of God to possess you? Why do you need to carry the word of God in your heart, in your life, in, your, in fact, on your lips at all times? The word of God terminates darkness. It takes away pain, sorrows. It gives light. It brings satisfaction. If you look at Psalm 119, verse 130, and it says, the, unfold, the unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. So the word brings light and even brings understanding. It ends anxiety and terminates fruitless effort. The word of God ends anxiety and terminates fruitless effort. You look at Luke 5, 4 to 6, and he says, When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down the net for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked hard all through the night, haven't caught nothing, but because you say so, I will lay down the net. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their net began to break. The word of God, obedience. So it's not enough for you to meditate, act on it. Say nevertheless. So you need to put the word to practice to increase your faith. When you have faith in God, you draws one to God's favor. You draws one to God's favor. Then it brings fulfillment of dreams and visions. You can see that in Revelation 5 verse 10. I said, you have made them to be a kingdom and priest to serve our God. They will reign on earth. Now you look at Luke 1 verse 37 and it says, For your, no word from God will ever fail. For no word from God will ever fail. So the word of God is so potent, so powerful that it will never fail. You know what Bible says? His word can never return to him void without accomplishing the purpose for which it was sent. So if you meditate on the word of God and put it to practice, you will get the benefit of trusting in the word of God and even putting it into practice. A lot of people trust the word of God and believe you, but they don't, they are afraid to put it into practice. Now, th this is what I have to say to us. Now, some people are afraid of saying things and it doesn't come to pass at, at a point when they want to excise their faith. It is not your problem. 
if you see the sick, pray for the sick and go on. You are not the one to heal the sick. It is God. It is purely his prerogative to execute his word, to make it come to pass. So if it doesn't happen, that day does not mean it's not going to happen again. If you pray for somebody today and the person does not get healed, that does not mean if you pray tomorrow, another person will not get healed. When you speak to a situation and it doesn't change, that does not mean another situation, if you speak to a situation, it won't change. No, take a step at a time. Now, secure your tomorrow if it has been hijacked. Your faith could actually make your tomorrow to be restored. You know, the Bible says, I'll restore unto you the days of the Pama Worm, the Kanker Worm. Who are the people that this Pama Worm and Kanker Worm days will be restored? The people who believe on the word of God, the people who trust in God, the people who have faith in Him. So, faith in Him keeps one from being obsessed with issues of life. You no know, things will just happen sometimes. The day will just come and be true, throwing tantrums, trying to throw and make you confused. You know, like what Job will say. Job says, though he afflicts me, I will see put my trust in him. So, his word is powerful. Believe him. Activate your faith and get your answers. Hello. Welcome to our channel. I will encourage you to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so that anytime we upload new episode, you'll be notified. Thank you. God bless you. Second outline, avoid distractions. It's actually distractions that make us not to believe God. Distractions may be friends, may be brothers, may be people around. So what can actually cause distraction? Unanswered prayers unanswered prayers can actually cause distraction. You look at Luke 1, 13 to 18. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid. Zachariah, your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son and you are to call him John. So they've been praying over time and God saw that even as a priest, he was not as active as he's supposed to be. So God had to send an angel to go and encourage him. So God is always there to send people to speak to us by time, even in our situations. Another one of the things that cause a failing of faith is previous setback. When you look at it, say, oh, yesterday I prayed, it didn't happen. No, because it didn't happen yesterday, does not mean it's not going to happen tomorrow. Unfulf unfulfilling family history. So you look at that, my daddy went through this, my mommy went through, oh, in fact, my uncles went through stuff. That does not mean your own is going to end that way. Believe God. Speak the word to situations. Stand in your place of faith. You may be the only one that will break the pattern. So, but when you give up, of course, you get enrobed, you get actually soaked in the pattern. But now speak to the pattern, speak to this situation. And then, of course, see how God will Take those family history away from you. Ceaseless temptations. Ceaseless temptations. If you look at Luke 4, 1 to 2, you know Jesus, after he left the wilderness, Satan went to tempt him. Start asking questions one after the other. But he never gave up. Of course, he was still pushing. He answered him one by one as the spirit of what was giving capacity. So he did it and we are now celebrating. Now, one of the things that made people not to believe in God, unmet needs. Unmet needs. But you know one thing I have to say. He knows our heart. He knows our plans. Now, the most important thing you have to know. In Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Say, for I know the thoughts I think towards you. Well, do you. Please, can you conclude this way? My thoughts are different from the thoughts of God. What I desire is different from what God desires. So, if God sees that what you desire will not give glory to his name or will not take you far, he will direct you. It's just like GPS. When you run a taxi. Or you enter a task and you're using adventure, maybe you use Google Map. When you route your movement and you get to a point that you actually miss your way, the Google Map will not complain, rather, will give you an option, alternative. So, God has a way of redirecting us, reroute us to where we're supposed to be. So, He knows what is good for us. So, when your needs are not met, please don't run away from Him. You always there to do it. Now, another thing that makes people fail. To fall is uncelebrated achievement when one success, one success does not receive desired recognition. You know, when Elisha killed the prophets of Baal 
and everything was turning to, I mean, working against him. He ran away to Horeb, a man that has called fire, and fire came to lick even water from the altar. And he killed over 300 prophets of Baal. Thereafter, one woman, some way, Jezebel, started sending word, and Elisha ran away. Because he felt, ah, of all that I've done, nobody's there. But you know, God was always there to tell him the truth. He said, I'm the only one remaining when he was even complaining, lamenting to God. God said, no, you are not the only one. I have 7,000 somewhere. You can see this story in 1 Kings 19. You can read from 1. He said, I have 7,000 somewhere that has not bowed their knees to bow. So those things can actually make people to lose their faith. So faith actually enhance our hearing and hearing the word of God. So, in conclusion, have you suffered setbacks, delay before, or it seems your dream may not be achieved or attained? Plug into your faith, and your testimony will be heard in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for always coming around to study with us. We've come to the end of our discussion. Thank you. See you in the next episode. God bless you. You're not a man, no. You're not You're the God who opens doors no man can shut.